Good afternoon, TEDx Emory. How are you? Good. Great. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, I am currently, as you heard, the CEO of FEEDS, which is a global advocacy initiative. Behind me, you see this very dynamic, energetic, and vibrant map of Africa. And you see the sun rising there on the east. And when I think of Africa, given my years on the continent, that's the vision that I have of the continent, the good news story. But I wonder with you whether or not you had that same picture in your mind when you think of a map of Africa. Is it something that a continent, a place that has a good news story? So whatever that picture is today, I want you to think about that a little bit differently. Even if you're a Westerner or a non-African, you may have a different picture. I want you to walk away with these three things in mind. That there's a different development focus on the continent than there was 20, 40 years ago. That there's a different footing for development. And certainly there is a different global impact that the region has today. And that's what I want you to think about. There's three questions that put this on a framework for you. What has caused this shift in development and the development approaches? What has helped the middle class grow? And what are some of the global implications that should make the region important to you? What has entered the picture? What has changed the paradigm and the dynamic that's made Africa on the rise today? It's Africa's small and medium-sized businesses, better known on the continent as SMEs. They have made a tremendous impact in economic development, particularly in these two areas, helping with job creation and reducing poverty levels. I see them as a magic bullet. I didn't say the magic bullet. I did say a magic bullet. And the two things that I just highlighted job creation and poverty reduction is really their impact, changing the gross domestic product of the continent, moving it from where it was at 12% to up to about 40% today. But you may wanna know what's the background? What's the framing analysis? What's the flashback that got us to where Africa's small and medium-sized businesses or SMEs are making this tremendous economic impact? Well, just like any other continent, the history of Africa has been quite mixed. You've had the pre-colonial period, the malevolent colonial period, and then you've had the projection toward independence that really culminated in 1960. But from the period of 1960 to 2000, you had Cold War politics. And so what happened in terms of development? How did the lives of the average African national change or did not change? Well, we all woke up in 2000 realizing that after 3.5 trillion US dollars had been spent on development, that nothing much had changed for the average daily life of the average African national. Poverty, educational challenges were still there, health challenges were still there. I was on the ground through most of that time. But in 2000, the global community kind of woke up. They recognized that we needed to do something quite differently. And so there was this shift in 2006 to 2016 is when the rise of African SMEs really began to happen. And what also happened during that period of time, we had incredible advances in technology, even in social media. If you think about it, when social media started kicking off in 2006, 2008, 2010, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and then you also had these sister benefits of technology. You had mobility that wasn't there before, and you also had knowledge management. So if you were a small farm holder in Tanzania or a small farm holder in Rwanda, you could have the world in your hands. So think of this as building blocks, Africa SMEs, this magic bullet role and the shift in development. So I have about eight sectors that I see where Africa SMEs have had this tremendous, tremendous impact. I'm just gonna give you a few of them. Power, for instance. 
You have 600 million Africans without power on a daily basis, which means it has an impact on education and it has an impact on health. You have SMEs making inroads in that area by developing pay-as-you-go electricity plans through scratch cards. You have agricultural efforts through appropriate technology, looking at ways to do things differently where you don't have to import things to grow agriculture. You have making their own local machines so they're not importing big tractors to do farming. You have new technology in housing. Because guess what? If you're living in extreme poverty, you also have a challenge with shelter. And so the green technology that's out there. And then you have the wonderful things that are being done in textiles. You know, whether you're using recycled buttons to make necklaces to sell, whether you're making textiles for clothing, all of these things are causing the rise of, F of Africa SMEs and really the good news story. So what's the global impact? The region has a tremendous demographic impact that I think you need to know, particularly in these few areas. Population. The population of the continent is currently 1.1 billion people. 1.1 billion. It is on course to be 2.4 billion by 2050. More than half of that population will be under the age of 30, 600 million plus people in that category. The most staggering figure, which I call a population dividend, which is a positive, is the fact that in 2035, which is an international monetary figure, you will have Africa having the largest working population in the world combined. It will be bigger than the combined rest of the world. That's pretty amazing. But what does that do? That makes it move to become the largest continent populated in the world, makes it become the largest market in the world, and makes it a base for creativity. So did you know that the first laser, laser digital microscope was made by a South African, a physicist. So you have this ability for creativity there. So I want you to walk away with really three things. One, the positive impact, particularly on economic development, the growing middle class, the reduction in poverty, the job creation. But more and more, it brought attention to the fact that you have this huge youth bulge. How are you going to get them employed? And you have a population that will be 50.2% uh, female. So, of course, this is a good news story. But, of course, there are other things that still are challenges. You still need more better governance, better transparency, transparency and you also need sort of efforts on anti-corruption. But the way forward, I think, is in four ways. One, I think there needs to be a global effort on Africa SMEs to keep them in the middle class, to make sure that it's not just a one-time Charlie, that they will move from where they are now to remain in the middle class. I think there needs to be a United Nations effort that focuses on Africa SMEs to make sure that they are getting all the support they need. And I think there has to be a bigger focus on females and the youth on the continent because they are going to represent the largest population that's there. So Africa to me really means not a renaissance, but it really means that things are rising. This is kind of a bookend story for you because I started with this very dynamic map and I wanted you to walk away with a different vision of the continent. I wanted you to think about it as energetic. I wanted you to think about it as dynamic. I wanted you to think about it as growing and I wanted you to think about it as rising. There are a number of good news stories and certainly Africa small and medium-sized businesses is one of those stories. Thank you.